Good morning. It is good to see everyone here today. I hope you're having a blessed start to your day. It's good to have those who are viewing via the web stream this morning. We ask God's blessings to be with you all as well. I'm thinking that we may have to share some bulletins this morning, which is a great situation to be in. I know we were really short just a few moments ago. Hopefully, as you arrived in worship, you received a gold coin, very similar to this one. Hold tight to that, and I'll say more about that a little bit later in our worship service. Just a few things briefly by way of announcement. I know I've got some things to share. Marcy has several things to share. First of all, related to the month of July, we have the July Church Newsletter now available. You can pick these up in the Narthex as well as the conference room that has my article and also the calendar for this coming month. Also, we have the newest copy of the Upper Room Daily Devotional. This is for the months of July and August 2021, so please be sure to grab a copy of that. We have these available in regular print as well as large print, and they can be found in the conference room as well as the Narthex. So keep that in mind if you're a regular follower of our Daily Devotional. Just a few things as far as we move into this week. Please remember today we will receive our second offering for the Denominational Ministry of the Month, and that ministry for the month of June is Cragmont Assembly. Please be in prayer for all of our adults and campers who will be leaving out this afternoon following services and headed to Camp Vandermeer down in Pamlico County. We will be back on Thursday evening, so we're praying for traveling mercies, a safe time for everyone. It's going to be a blessing. Looking forward to being able to go back. This will be my first time in about seven years going to a week of camp. It's going to be a little bit different this year with us being at Vandermeer instead of Cragmont, but we're excited about what the Lord has has in store as we go into this week. With me being away at camp this week, please be sure to contact your family deacon if any emergency should arise and they would be able to get in touch with me. Because I'll be away also, we will not have our Revelation Bible study this Wednesday morning. We'll take a break this week and we will resume the following Wednesday with Revelation chapter 20. One change that I need to make, and you can make this on your calendar as well if you have the newsletter, the Officer Installation Sunday. That's the Sunday where we call all of our boards and committees to the front and we charge them for the new church year. That is going to be on Sunday, August the 1st. We're going to have a baptism Sunday on July the 25th. So Officer Installation Sunday is going to be Sunday, August the 1st. So if you're a part of our boards, our committees, our ministry teams, please be sure to be here so that you can share in that worship service. Are there any other announcements to come before us at this time? I'm looking in the back for my cues. Marcy still has need of volunteers for Vacation Bible School. That's coming up in just a couple of weeks, the 11th through the 15th of July. She needs a recreation person and a few people to help with opening assembly skits. 
preferably males, okay? Do they have to say a whole lot? That, that may be the kicker right there, if they have to say a lot or memorize anything. All right. Today is a very special Sunday as we recognize our graduate for this year. Actually, we'll have two graduates that we will mention in the service this morning. Only one is able to be with us during this time of worship. So at this time, would you stand for the processional of our graduate, Mr. Tyler Johnson. At this time, may we prepare our hearts and our minds as we worship God together. Please stand and join me in the responsive call to worship. Every generous act of giving is a tribute to God's love for us. Lord, let us be people of generous and abundant gifts for others. Be ready to listen and slow to react in anger. Lord, prepare us to be peaceful people. Keep your hearts and spirits ready to serve the Lord. Peep, open our hearts to hear and respond to your words of life in ministries of hope and encouragement. Amen. Brother Jerry Godwin, will you lead us in our invocation? same time, Lord, we also want to be held. Call us when we're fearful. Call us when we lack hope. Call us when we need to be held. We pray. 
trash you, Lord. We love you. And Lord, if there be one that does not know you as Lord and Savior, we pray that you speak to them, they recognize your voice, and Lord, they profess your name as Lord and Savior. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Standing as we sing our song of celebration, Amazing Grace, page 202. to celebrate our class of 2021. Um, it has not been an easy past couple of years for this class. Um, they haven't been at school very much. <laughs> um, they, their school year has been um, done mostly virtual and uh, you finally got to sing with the Hunt Chorus at your graduation, right? <laughs> His chord is um, that he's wearing, get up here, Tyler. Get up here. <laughs> <laughs> and I joked, I have always joked, he is the slowest child that I've ever seen. He goes nowhere fast. Slower than Marshall? Well, yeah. <laughs> and he wants to be a fireman. So when, so when he was coming, I said, act like you're going to a fire. Come on. They were playing, and he won't even in here. But, but his chord is for singing with the Hunt Chorus for four years. Four years, but he didn't actually get to sing with them all four years. Well, I guess you got to sing with them part of. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> you got to sing at your graduation this year, yeah. and you got to sing part of last year. <laughs> so... Um, but he's planning to be a, he is a junior fireman already with, um, with. I'm a junior no more. Oh, you ain't a junior no more, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> he is bigger than me, you know. He, he's, he's a fireman with the um, Crossroads Fire Department, but he started out being a junior fireman when? 
2017. 2017. They still ain't told him to be fast. So <laughs> hopefully, fire automotives. hopefully he'll <laughs> learn that when he goes to fire academy. So he's planning on going to fire academy at Johnston Community College um, to become a full-time fireman. And I, he, he was a preschooler when I, he was this big when I came here, and he's, you know, yes. this big now. So congratulate you on your Thank graduation. You. Thank you. I'm proud of it. <laughs> And do we have the slide for the other graduate as well? The other graduate is not able to be with us today, but um, Gabriel Batts is um, graduate. That is a combination of Gabriel and Elijah and Lillian's name. I, I, I don't have the pronunciation that Samira sent me, but I'm going to murder it if I try to say it but their homeschool academy, that's their name. Um, and his honors and recognitions um, is that he's working to complete his Eagle Scout. Um, and then his future plans are that he's continuing to work at um, Journeyman's at Ocracoke, which um, is a campgrounds and restaurant that, they helped, that he helped his family to restore and rebuild. Um, so we congratulate Gabriel as well. Um, and then a third one that I forgot, um, Tom White is actually a member of our church, and he graduated from college. Um, from what college was it? <coughs> Coastal Plains or maybe? Coastal Plains Community College. So um, we extend our congratulations to Tom as well. Um, so we, we extend our congratulations to all of our graduates for our class of 2021. Our softer lesson today comes from Psalm 16, verses 5 through 11. Psalm 16, 5 through 11. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be unto God. God. As we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer, I draw your attention to the back portion of the bulletin this morning, calling attention to certain names, certain needs within our church family and extended community. Uh, we remember Mr. Phil Wiggs as he'll be having another heart ablation procedure later this coming week. We remember Dolan Atkinson as he's recovering from cataract surgery early this past week. Everything went really well. We also want to lift up Mr. Donnie Barnes as he was able to transition on Wednesday to the Bryan Center for rehab. We lift up Peggy Lucas. It says on the bulletin there, hospital, but when I talked to her on Friday evening, she was planning to come home yesterday, so hopefully everything did work out yesterday. And we remember the family of Annette Flowers who went to be with the Lord this past Thursday. Her services are as follows. They will take place at Joyner's Funeral Home tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. That will be followed by a time of visitation. And then the committal will take place on Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. Are there other names, other needs that are close to your hearts this morning? Ms. Kay? Ms. Kay's sister, Rose. Joe, 
Joe Irwin. Hillary? The family of Pat Turner. The family of Pat Turner. Buster? Family of Mike Lancaster. Absolutely. This is a great testimony to look at and to see so many faces smiling back. This is probably the biggest crowd we've had since we shut down pre COVID. And this is very encouraging. We appreciate everyone coming back and for supporting us through all of this. It's been a tough year this past year, as Marcy's already alluded to, but it is good to see many of you back in person. We know there's still some who are watching via the web stream, and we look forward to having you back in person as well. Definitely a praise item. Anyone else? And, for those of us who are going to camp. and we pray for all who will be going to camp, all of the adults and the children and youth from this church and from a few other congregations that it will be a wonderful week that's blessed in a lot of different ways. Perhaps you have unspoken needs that are close to your hearts and minds. God sees each and every heart, and God understands the depths of our needs and our hurts. Would you bow with me for a time of prayer? Lord, we all have a path in life. We don't have to be a recent high school or college grad to understand that there is a path before us. Lord, the path is different from each and every one of us. The path is seldom straight and true like we want it to be. There are lots of twists and turns, occasional roadblocks and detours. Lord, we never know from day to day what we may encounter, but we have the great assurance that you are with us in this journey of life. Lord, we lift up to you those graduates whose names have been mentioned as we celebrate their accomplishments, the hard work that they've put in over the years to be able to reach this particular point. And we ask, Lord, that you would lead, guide, and direct them as they continue to make their future plans. May they be in line with your will and your purposes for their living. God, we thank you for this day that we can be here together to worship as we think about what it means to be a people who are givers, people who are willing to share, whether it's little bits or major amounts, Lord, it doesn't matter. We know that you've called us to be a generous people. Lord, that's one of the true marks of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ, and that's a reminder that Paul gives us in today's reading from 2 Corinthians 8. Lord, help us to examine our hearts, our living, and may our day-to-day -day practice of the faith be in accordance with Christ. May we be willing to always go above and beyond to give selflessly and sacrificially not for our own gain, not for our own blessing and benefit, but so that we might make the lives of others just a little bit easier. Lord, you have truly called us to be blessed, to be a blessing. May that be our goal each and every day that we live out our Christian faith. Lord, as we assemble today, we think of all of the names that have been mentioned verbally, those printed upon our prayer list, and so many represented through uplifted hands. We believe in the power of prayer. We know that prayer continues to touch your heart. It continues to change so many things around us. Lord, we don't know what we may face in this journey, but we know without a doubt that you will give us the strength we need day by day to help us abide, to help us cope, to help us keep pressing forward. Lord, we lift up to you all of these needs. You know the circumstances, the trials, the difficulties that so many are going through. We think of families who are grieving the passing of loved ones. We remember those who are recovering from hospitalizations. We think about those who are preparing for various procedures, those who are recovering from surgeries. 
Lord, you know all of the needs, all of the circumstances that we share this morning, and we entrust them to your presence, that you would give peace and hope, strength and encouragement wherever it is needed the most this very day. Now, Lord, continue to be with us in this season of worship and prepare us, Lord, to go out into the mission field where you send us to be your hands and feet. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. We are blessed to have Miss Hillary Barnes provide our special music and our anthem during this season of worship. So may we be blessed. May we allow God's spirit to speak through the gift of her song at this hour. told the crowd in front of me, I was like, yeah, everybody's excited that the church is all full, but it has to be the Sunday that I'm singing? Really? Really? <laughs> Apparently. Did y'all tap? Did you send that out in the message? Because I didn't listen to it the other day. Well, then they can sing along. <laughs> It's 
that the fan's blowing right here and the closer I get the more that fan was blowing it's like hey the wind is blowing <laughs> Please stand and join me in the prayer for a generous heart, which we will be saying in unison. Let us begin. God, we acknowledge you as the source and sustainer of life. Through your loving initiation, we brought all things into being and see to it daily that our needs are satisfied. As the giver of all good things, you have invited us also into the generosity of your grace. You have endowed our lives with spiritual gifts and physical resources through which to accomplish the purposes of your kingdom upon earth. Empower us each day to be selfless with our blessings in order that others might come to know of your love. May all that we are and all that we possess be used by you for your good pleasure and in a manner which encourages generosity in others. Amen. The children may come with me at this time to Junior Church. Our sermon text for today is taken from Paul's letter to the Corinthians that we know as 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and this morning we'll be looking at verses 7 through 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. 
May we give ear to the reading of Holy Scripture. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this manner I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure upon you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. For as it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Brothers and sisters, may God add a blessing to this, the reading, hearing, understanding, and living of God's word for our days. Amen. And amen. A story is told post World War II of an American soldier. The story goes like this with the effects of World War II having taken such a major toll upon Europe. One of the greatest effects was upon orphan children throughout Europe. And on this given occasion, this American soldier was on his way back to his barracks in London. And as he was driving along in his Jeep, he turned the corner and he noticed this small boy who was standing in front of a pastry shop. The little boy was ooing and eyeing at everything that was going on through the window. There was a baker who was kneading dough. He would knead a little bit, then he would step over to the oven and remove fresh bread and put it on display there in the counter. He would go back to his kneading. The soldier couldn't help but continue to follow this little boy as he was interacting with his eyes with what was going on inside of the pastry shop. So finally, the soldier decided to get out of his jeep. He walked over to this young boy as he was peering through the bakery shop window, as he was taking in everything that the baker was doing, and he could tell that the little boy was hungry. It was obvious to the little boy that he was very hungry and that he wanted some of what the baker had, and the troop, the soldier, looked at the little boy and said, would you like some of what he's making? And he said, oh boy, sir, would I? I sure would love to have some of those hot loaves of bread. And the soldier said, give me just a moment. He went inside, he took out some money, he bought 12 loaves and put it in a bag and came out and gave it to the little boy who was overwhelmed by the generosity of this American soldier. The soldier said, here you go and have a blessed day. And as he turned to walk away, he felt a tug at the back of his goat. And he turned and he looked at the little boy, and the little boy looked up at the soldier and said, Mr., are you God? It's a simple but very powerful tale, isn't it? 
Because the reality is, yes, when we do the right thing, when we're generous from our hearts as God has displayed his generosity to us, we become a little bit like God to others. To hear this text is one that is a great challenge to all of us. It's certainly one that is challenging for the preacher to communicate. And sometimes it's difficult for the average person to listen to these words because we start to tighten up, we begin to cringe and say, well, oh goodness, he's going to start to proclaim tithing and giving once again. But no, that's not really why I'm here this morning. I don't believe that's what Paul was trying to do either because there are some who, when they come to this subject matter of generosity, try to twist arms as though you can coerce people to be generous with the things of God. But it simply doesn't work that way, brothers and sisters. Paul knew that, and he knew that the Corinthian believers knew that as well. And I think it's important that all of us, even today, some 2,000 years removed from Paul's writings, that we remember that generosity is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of a God change within each and every one of us. When you look at this text, it's interesting to point out some of the background, what's going on earlier in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and to set the tone of what was going on within the church, the church back in Jerusalem, the mother church if you will, and the Gentile believers in other places where Paul had been doing his ministry. At the very beginning of this chapter, we're told a little bit of some of the issue that was going on back in Jerusalem. There were some struggles, there were some trials amongst the believers there in Jerusalem, and it had been recommended, even encouraged, that those in other ministry locations participate in a love offering that would benefit the believers within the mother church. Here we find that Paul is telling those in Corinth something that they already know, something they're already quite familiar with. They know of this undertaking, and apparently at some point in the past, they had a desire to be a part of this ministry endeavor. They had sincere motives. They had a wonderful perspective, a good outlook. They were eager, but when it came to moving beyond eagerness, there was hesitation. They had the best of intentions, but they lacked what we would call follow-through. They had started off on a good footing, and now Paul is trying to recharge that eagerness, to try to get them moving once again. But he's not doing so as though to force the Corinthian believers to do anything they don't want to do. But he's reminding them because of what they've encountered, what they've experienced through the resurrected Christ, that this is an appropriate undertaking, that they participate in this willingly and lovingly as a result of God's grace. When we look at this text for today, we find several key points that remind us about what it means for us to be a people of generosity, a people who are defined by sharing what we have so that other people can be blessed just as God has blessed our own lives. One of the first things that we notice in this passage as Paul was teaching the Corinthian believers is the fact that our giving is a true expression of our love for God and for our fellow human beings. 
When we give, we are not simply being generous because of what it does for us. We are generous people because we truly love God. And when you and I learn to love God from the heart, we can't help but love people. Because as the body of Christ, we are in the people business. It's a very different situation from business out there in the secular world, as we say. But as the church, as the body of Christ, we are in this together as people in order that we might reach other people. Paul says that the believers in Corinth were excelling in a lot of things. Their faith. Their speech, their knowledge, there were a lot of things according to verse 7 that those believers in Corinth had right, that they were doing well in their faith. They had everything down to a T as far as being able to communicate eloquently. That was something that was so very important within the Roman Empire of that day and time. Being an expert with rhetoric being able to win debates by outspeaking your opponent, having all kinds of information and insight about life and what makes life work and being able to connect different facets of life together. But here Paul says it's not enough to simply know certain things. It's not enough to speak well of your faith. It's a matter of doing something because of your faith. It's a matter of being shaped by the gospel of Jesus Christ so that you're able to be a generous people. Verse 8 says that I do not say this as a command, but I'm testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of of others. I believe that's a key word within this text. Genuineness of your love. You know, that's one of the great struggles for many people with the Christian community today. When they look at a people of faith, they wonder about how genuine we really are with what we're about. And by that, I don't simply mean being able to talk the gospel. I don't mean being able to quote scripture. I don't mean being able to browbeat people into the kingdom of God. I don't mean to drag people kicking and screaming to church. I mean people who sincerely know what this book is all about and seek to live it as empowered through the Holy Spirit each and every day. You and I can be like the Corinthians and know a whole lot about this book right here. We can say a whole lot of really fine things about God, Christianity, what it means to be a part of the church, but if our actions are not being shaped in a manner that is like Christ, then you and I have missed the point. You and I have missed the mark about what it means to truly be a part of this community of faith. It's not just knowing certain things. It's not just consenting to certain things. But it's about being a certain kind of people. People want to see something that's genuine in this day and time, brothers and sisters. People have seen enough fallacies. They've seen enough masquerades of religion. People have seen a lot of things in this world that proclaim to be of God but are far, far removed from God. When we're true to the gospel of Jesus Christ, not in a way that's selfish, Not in a way that brings us special attention, but when we're true to the person and work of Jesus, the love of God unfolds. People see something real that is worth committing one's life to. 
the example that Paul gives us here is that of Christ. He doesn't say, go and do good things, go and help others, be generous with what you have, because this is Paul's opinion, this is Paul's personal idea. No. He says, I'm teaching this to you, I'm encouraging this from you, because Jesus has already been the supreme example of this to you because He was rich. He was in the heavens. He was with the Father before He became flesh. But He relinquished all of that. He let go. He took on human flesh. He gave His life sacrificially so that we might experience the riches of God's kingdom. We become like Christ when we give, when we share, not begrudgingly, when we don't give out of arrogance and personal pride, when we don't give just to get the preacher off of our back or just to be seen by other people, but when we give in the right spirit just as Christ gave His all for us, we express the love of God and love toward others. But another thing that Paul tells us in the midst of all of this is that in being a generous people, we have to stop complaining about what we don't have. He uses the example here about not dwelling upon the things that this person has or that person has, but focusing and being true to what God has graced your life with. I think that's an important reminder for believers, not only in Corinth then and there, but even for Christians today, because a lot of times we compare ourselves with other people. Well, she has this, he has this, they're able to do that. We compare not only human lives individually and families and such, we compare this congregation to that congregation, and this congregation's got a bigger building, and this congregation has five ministers on staff instead of three ministers on staff or whatever. We become very competitive as Christians, and unfortunately, we start to wallow in what we don't have, what we can't do, what we can't accomplish. God has not called us as a people to sit around moping, wringing our hands, saying that we don't and we can't and we won't. God has graced all of us individually and as a congregation for 150 years to do some amazing work for the sake of God's kingdom within this community and points beyond. And he's done that because of what we do have and what we are willing to offer to God to be used for the ministry of God's kingdom. But if we're not careful, we get focused on the wrong things. We get sidetracked by those things that are not really all that essential to portraying the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to be true to who we are and what we have to offer. That's true to Kelly Smart, that's true for John Doe, that's true for Jane Doe. God doesn't want to know what you don't have. God wants to know what you do have, and because of what you do have, what are you willing to do with that to tell someone else that God loves them? That God loves me, that God loves all of us here. What are we willing to do with what we do have out there so that other people may see the genuineness of our faith as we give with what God has given to us. A third and final point that the Apostle Paul makes for us is that our selfless giving contributes to the overall unity of the community of faith. It's the word solidarity. When we 
give, when we are a generous people, when we share our blessings with God to be a blessing to other people, we come together in partnership with something that is bigger than any one of us individually and something that is greater than any one congregation can accomplish in and of itself. Paul, in speaking to a group of Gentile believers, was challenging them to get beyond their being Gentile. To get beyond any prejudices that maybe they could have had toward the Jewish Christians back in Jerusalem. People that they didn't know, people that they would not meet on this side of heaven, but as the gospel began there in Jerusalem and spread out to the Gentile world through their giving, through their generosity, these Gentile congregations would express that they're no different, they're no better than the Jewish believers and vice versa. It's not about Jews versus Gentiles, as Paul says elsewhere in his writings. It's not about slave versus free. It's not about man versus woman. It's not about this versus that. It's about togetherness. It's about partnering with one another in something good. Paul wanted those in Corinth to realize that even though they may not have known those people by name and face back in Jerusalem, they owed it to that faith community. As the mother church who had sent forth missionaries so that the Gentile world might come to know the gospel, these Gentiles needed to show that they were one with the congregation back in Jerusalem. The Gentile Christians were no better than the Jewish ones. The Jewish Christians were no more special, no more closer to God than the Gentile believers. And here we find Paul saying that when we give, when we come together and are a generous people, we are expressing the genuine unity that is the church, that is the people of God. Growing up, one of my favorite games was that of Monopoly. I was an only child, but I had three cousins who were a lot like brothers to me. Once in a while, Kelsey will say, can we play Monopoly? I don't think she fully understands how long it takes to play that game and to do everything justice, but it is a game that's still around our house, and we'll pull it out from time to time just to kind of make Kelsey happy. But I love to think back to my childhood days playing it with my cousin. We would get there in my grandparents' house. We would set everything up, and it would always start off really good. It was a game. It was for the sake of fun. But then it was only a matter of time before competitiveness kicked in. It was only a matter of time before someone was losing money in the game and started to get a sour grapes attitude about everything. It was only a matter of time before one started to get a leg up on the other cousins and started feeling really comfortable and confident about himself. You know where this is going. What was fun and innocent and supposed to pass time on a summer afternoon at my grandparents turned into a total disaster. Because it was only a matter of time before this one's yelling at that one. You're cheating. There's no way that you have that much money. You owe me this much rent on my property because you landed on my space. Well, I'm just tired of losing, so y'all can just have the game. (laughs) And the next thing you know, there's pieces flying Houses and hotels rolling across the carpet. Money in all denominations falling from the ceiling because someone has just had it and taken the bank and chunked it in the air. But there's something about that game Monopoly that I want to touch on as I close this morning. In Monopoly, your goal is to get as much as possible. 
to buy properties, to build houses, to pass go, get $200 many, many times over, to have other people land on your property, to charge them rent. Basically, your goal is to bankrupt everybody else in the game. The goal is for one person to come out on top, and that person comes out on top by having the majority, if not all, of the goods. This life that God has called us to is no game. It's certainly no game of monopoly. It's the reality that we call life. The life that God has given us to live is not about how much we can glean for ourselves. It's not about how much we can show up the next person, make them feel bad for what they don't have, but it's about taking what we do have and investing it in the kingdom of God. Today as you arrived in worship, you received a small plastic gold coin. It's not worth a whole lot. I think the whole pack of a hundred cost maybe two or three bucks. You're not going to go to McDonald's and get anything off of the value menu with that today. But what I do want you to do is keep it with you. Put it in your pocket, keep it in your purse, a wallet, cup holder in your car, the dashboard, stick it somewhere prominent at home when you wake up in the morning, see it on your mirror, whatever that may mean for you. I want this to be a reminder that God has called all of us to this work of generosity. That because of God's grace, we all have an equal share in the ministry of God's kingdom. It's not about impressing others with what we have. It's not about condemning others for what they don't have. But it's about taking what we do have and pulling it together for the unity of the body of Christ, for the good of God's love, so that other people may experience salvation through the resurrected Christ. We've all been blessed. Now may we go forth to be the blessing this week. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. This morning our hymn of commitment is number 201, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, will you come? This altar is open. As I shared from 2 Corinthians last Sunday, today is the day of grace. Today is the opportunity for salvation. Maybe you would like to recommit your life to following Christ. Maybe you would like to unite with the church family that is Little Rock Original Free Will Baptist and be a more complete part of God's ministry to our community. Maybe there are needs that are pressing upon your hearts and minds or even thanksgivings that you would like to share with your Heavenly Father. No matter the need, no matter the condition of the heart, the altar is open, the Spirit is speaking. Will you follow as we stand to sing hymn number 201? Song, but there's one thing that is not quite right in this song. And I'm not sure what's going to be on the screen, but in the book, in the first verse, just before you get to the chorus, it says, There where the blood of the Lamb was spilt. Spilt implies accidental. And there was nothing Jesus did on that cross that was accidental. So if we could, when we sing this song, let's change spilt to shed. Okay, let us stand. <clears throat>
My brothers and sisters, it's been good to be with you today in the house of our Lord and Savior. As we go forth from this place, may we be equipped to be God's hands and feet. May we be the salt and the light. May we be generous with what God has gifted us with so that others may experience the reality of God's love for them as well. Following the benediction, the blessing of the offering, I'm going to ask Tyler if you will recess out. I know you'll want to extend your hand of fellowship and congratulations to him in the narthex as we conclude worship this morning. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this time that we've been able to share together in your house. Lord, I ask that you would bless all of my brothers and sisters as they depart this house of worship, that they may be eager, enthusiastic, passionate with their faith. But Lord, may it be a sincere expression of your love and the transformation that you've brought about within each and every one of their hearts. Help them to be generous with everything that you have graced them with so that other people might see the reality of your love and action. Lord, we also ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings, that you might multiply them for the ongoing good work of your kingdom here upon earth. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.